How did one of the most well-respected podcasters with over 1 billion combined views go from interviewing legends of the hip-hop world Here with my good friend Juice World, we were just kicking it and I was like, bro to finding himself being humiliated by the entire internet in a cesspool of online drama and controversy Are you actually acting like I have some kind of disrespect for your mom when You're I fucking You're disrespectful as fuck I paid for the fucking first funeral of all, as soon as it all, happened just because Hi, I'm the Internet Anarchist. I create weekly YouTube documentaries, and today, we'll be taking a deep dive into the controversial career of Adam22, and the events that not only destroyed his reputation, but also led up to him becoming one of the most clowned cucks on the internet. To understand the crisis plaguing the No Jumper brand, we'll first have to uncover what led Adam to YouTube in the first place. Shortly after moving from his hometown to New York, Adam would leave his life of credit card fraud mixed with online poker, and become more interested in the online world of BMX. Farms. Scamming comes way before gambling. Okay, talk about that. It was, I mean, I, I talked about it a, a few times a before on other podcasts, but it was basically like, I just knew this kid who knew this kid. He got in touch with me and he basically like just showed me how to do credit card fraud. And so me and my friends had like a little group going basically. Naturally, Adam would seek out a way to monetize his love for BMX, and he looked up to early hip hop blogs for inspiration. By 2006, Adam would create his own BMX forum called The Come Up, where he began regularly posting articles. Like, you know, it didn't feel like I was above, like, doing something noble at that yeah. time. And I got 1500 bucks, and I'm like, okay, he just paid like a couple months of my rent at this time, you know? And then, like, Within a year, The Come Up became one of the most visited BMX blogs on the entire internet. And from 2008 to 2010, Adam would launch his own clothing brand, On Some Shit, a YouTube channel by the same name, and move to Los Angeles, California to further expand his business. The move would prove to be one of Adam's best decisions, as Los Angeles would go on to house the largest BMX scene in the country, and it didn't take long for Adam to establish a BMX store. The store would eventually attract several notable people in the BMX community, and with Adam being the smart businessman that he is, he sensed another opportunity brewing. As Adam decided to interview several of the popular BMX riders that came into his store, he would go on to convert the back of the building into a studio, as he would start an official podcast on YouTube called The Come Up. But this would only be the beginning, as it wouldn't be until 2015 that Adam decided to take advantage of the growing underground hip hop scene by interviewing the up and coming SoundCloud rappers. I'm kind of like right at the epicenter of a lot of the underground SoundCloud rap shit that was going on, like all, like Playboy Cardi stopping by the bike shop, you know, Ski Master Slump God, all these guys were like kind of around and shit. And so then that's how I kind of started to get some of those interviews and stuff, even though myself, I'm pretty The viewership for the podcast would skyrocket, which would lead Adam to rebrand the channel as No Jumper, named after a famous Gucci main lyric. The No Jumper podcast would feature several legendary rappers like XXXTentacion and Juice World. These interviews giving the channel a reputation for being a great place for exclusive information about your favorite underground hip hop personalities. As No Jumper grew popular in the hip hop world, Adam got even more opportunities to garner influence, not just with the artists, but the labels as well. He went on tour with Lil Pump and received a record label contract with Atlantic Records. By this point, Adam was doing very well for himself. He managed to break from the obscurity of the BMW mech scene and become a recognizable name in the hip-hop community. But unfortunately for Adam, his newfound notoriety would become a double-edged sword. But you know what else is a double-edged sword? The internet. That's why I protect my information with today's sponsor, Surfshark VPN. Surfshark VPN ensures your online privacy by encoding all the data exchanged between your device and the web, safeguarding your personal details from large corporations and online threats. As a YouTuber, I frequently work in cafes and value my content's privacy. Using a VPN, I protect all my work on public Wi-Fi and bypass region-locked content. A VPN shields your online actions by encrypting your data this is especially vital on public Wi-Fi that's often targeted by hackers. Concealing your IP ensures your online discretion, detaching your activities from your personal identity. Surfshark's clean web tool keeps you safe from ads, unwanted trackers, and threats. Plus, Surfshark never records or stores your online endeavors, maintaining a no-log policy. One of my favorite TV shows of all time is Breaking Bad, which thanks to Surfshark VPN, I can stream through UK servers. Best of all, Surfshark offers a 30-day money-back guarantee, so there's absolutely no risk to Try it out for yourself. Use code ANARCHIST when signing up using the link in my description to receive an additional 3 months completely free. Now back to seeing
scene where everything falls apart for Adam, as it would be by this point that allegations would begin to surface. On the 23rd of March 2018, the seeds of Adam's downfall would be sown, when allegations that he had R-worded one of his ex-girlfriends came to the surface. Shortly after the allegations were made public in a now-deleted Twitter post, Adam shared his own side of the story, quoting, A girl I dated for a few months 10 years ago is coming out saying that I raped and assaulted her. These claims are new. She has no evidence. I have plenty of emails from her that make it clear how absurd these claims are. I've done plenty of stupid shit in my life, but I've never raped or hit a woman. I didn't know women from my past would fabricate rape stories, but I'm ready to face those head on too. According to an article post on Pitchfork, an anonymous woman had gotten in contact with Connor Tripler on Twitter and claimed that Adam was a quote, serial who was notorious for doxing women who speak up against him for the general sentiment from Adam's fans was innocent until proven guilty, with comments along the lines of, The bullshit will show, don't worry. Just keep moving forwards with what you do best. Only the weak-minded, insecure people will do this, because they forgot how an L needs to be taken, with grace. The most striking piece of evidence presented against Adam was his old B9 board posts, which have been deleted from archives. Fortunately, screenshots of the posts are still available. This is a story about love. Well, no, but it's a story about girls. One girl in particular, a girl who is a bit of an internet legend in her own right, even though right now she is still just 19. That girl is Desire. The post then went on to detail how Adam met Desire on the B9 board, their initial chemistry, and a very steamy conversation they had on the phone. Adam would acknowledge how inappropriate the interaction was with a line that read, If statutory R word is wrong, I didn't want to be right. On the 26th of March 2018, another Twitter user by the name of Helen added fuel to the fire with a statement that claimed that she was one of Adam's many victims. The images included in the tweet were screenshots from Adam's old B9 profile, as well as a statement from the alleged victim, with parts quoting, It should be noted for the record that he was well into his 20s when we began sexual relations when I was 16. He is denying this despite the fact that multiple women have come forward with similar allegations over the past decade. The abuse I endured from Adam 22 stole years from my life, plunged me into a deep depression, and affected every relationship I've had to this day. Helen would go on to reference Connor Triplett's threat on Adam, and even urge Atlantic Records to cut ties with him, with parts quoting, she was a minor in several photos. She doesn't want clout on money. She's had to sick lawyers on him once already to force him to remove her nudes and name. Don't accept this is all in the past. Let Atlantic Records know that this is not okay. And by the 30th of June 2018, various news websites had picked up the story and ran with the idea that Adam had indeed committed the crimes he was accused of. And an Atlantic Records spokesperson commented on the situation, stating, We take any allegations of this nature very seriously and we are looking into them. Naturally, many of Adam's core fanbase still reserved that he was innocent, and it seemed that most of those that deemed him guilty weren't as familiar with his brand. It wouldn't be until the 22nd of June 2018 that Adam would publicly address the allegations in an interview with DJ Vlad. Yeah, I mean, it's just because it's such a gray area because there's nothing that's going to happen that could prove what actually happened in some bedroom like 12 years ago, 11 years ago. Yeah. Like there's nothing that could happen that could really like swing, that could prove definitively that one thing happened or another. Yeah. But I mean, at the same time, like I had all these records of like the conversations that we had and everything. And you know, it's like, you'd think like there's one email that just stands out to me in particular that she sent me in which when I wrote the blog post, she wrote me a big ass email, like sort of correcting everything that she saw as wrong about the blog post. Mm -hmm. and, at, and, and keep in mind, this is a girl who said that I abused her and raped her and all this shit. You read the list of things that she was saying were wrong about the blog post, she's still telling me she loves me in the email. She's still telling me like all this stuff. There's no mention of anything. Like I'm just- By now, the attitude of the No Jumper fans towards the allegations were now shifting away from skepticism and towards considering them as the truth. With one of the comments quoting, If you're familiar with this dude, Adam, these allegations are well within the range of possibility. And another stating, He started talking to her at 16, when he was well into young adulthood. He says he didn't meet her until she was 17 or 18, when he flew out to meet her. That sounds a lot like sexual grooming, dude. 
He has no place to be so confused by the fact that she felt violated and taken advantage of because she was. The following year, Atlantic Records stated that they would no longer be working with the No Jumper brand. Adam's dreams of actively participating in the music space barely lasted a year, with him only releasing two tracks. He would once again share his perspective on the situation in another interview with DJ Vlad. And then you lost your record deal. Well, we had a one-year deal and we did the one year. And then we decided not to go forward from that. Okay. Was it because of all the allegations that started to resurface? Um, so first off, we had a one-year deal and we did the one year and then we sort of hit the end of the one year. And then we had a conversation and they basically explained like, you know, we're like a big fucking corporate company and we have a lot of bullshit that we got to deal with, people we got to answer to. And they're like, you know, you ended up being a bit more controversial than we maybe had planned on. And it's kind of stopped us from getting a lot of stuff done. But the thing things went all doom and gloom for Adam. Even though he had just lost the deal with Atlantic Records, Adam still had the No Jumper brand, which was rapidly growing. From 2020 to 2022, Adam decided to vary the content available on the channel and create several new shows like Disconnected and At The End Of The Day podcast under his brand. Adam assembled colorful casts of weekly hosts like AD, Lush, Housephone, T-Rail, and Sharp to run the new weekly shows, all of whom were familiar faces that fans enjoyed watching, which resulted in the new podcasts making up for the bulk of the new content and views on No Jumper. Along with the new hosts came with a new wave of different guests. These guests weren't the typical underground artists that were initially featured on the podcast. But the fans, they decided to watch anyway. But unfortunately for Adam22, No Jumper's growth would reach its downfall. Fast forward to 2023, the topics discussed on No Jumper shifted from telling stories of upcoming rappers to promoting gang violence, political debates, and several beefs between the hosts. Hey, no, 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 no. Violent outbursts, conflict, and controversy became the driving force behind the No Jumper brand, and it would only get worse as time went on. Up until now, Adam wasn't directly involved in any of these disagreements on set, but he actively promoted them from the sidelines. But this would all change on the 18th of January. During an interview with Instagram personality Gracie Jane, Adam outed his close friend and co-host house phone for sleeping with a trans person. That look down upon to expose that somebody may have been with a trans person? If um, yeah, absolutely. I sign NDAs and I take them very seriously, so just but letting everybody know that. You didn't get that. one, I'm guessing? <laughs> you didn't fucking meet me, fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck? So just air him out. But I feel like, in general, that's you kind of a thing. You pay for discretion in this world, okay? Uh -huh. It's not about him, this is about me. I have a feeling that this will soon be about him. Oh, I'm gonna be hearing a lot about this. And people, this well, was this was sludge. I'm just fucking take it up with me. I don't give a fuck. I would like to say the same, but it seems like I'm worried about people calling me a bad friend for just not editing a this and putting friend. it out. They're gonna be mad at me, but I'm just. He's just gonna be. Uh, well, how about this? If he's mad, at, if you're mad at him, I think I'm mad at you because you're being a bad friend to me by acting weird and shady, acting like you didn't do some shit that you did do, and you know you did. I've been friends with him for like. And I just don't want to be like out Viewers there. didn't take kindly to the fact that Adam was exposing very intimate parts of his friend's life. And they openly shared their dissatisfaction in the comment section. With a comment quoting, Adam's not a bad friend. He's not a friend at all. He doesn't respect any of his employees. He's just scared of half of them. As well as, the fact that this interview is still up speaks volumes. Prior to the interview being uploaded, House Friend requested that Adam would remove all mentions that breached his privacy, but either due to an error with the editor or due to Adam's negligence, this request wasn't honored. Within hours of the upload, House Friend began facing harassment from both his fans and in a circle, forcing him to air out his frustrations on an episode of Disconnected. Was like being apologetic and being like, yo, I, I watched it twice and I, I thought I got everything and blah, blah, blah. And like, it was somebody I considered like the homie too. So I'm just like, bro, I'm just feeling like Op City. Like, you damn, I'm like, mistake or like, I mean, I'm just like, bro, it's just, I don't know, bro. On the 1st of February, 2023, tension would reach its boiling point during one of their weekly shows after house friend finally confronted Adam. I'm um, shit. He's been going through the health shit. You talking about the person that fucking raised me, that birthed me, my best friend that died. Oh, just, he's been going through the mom shit. But you, you, are you actually acting like I have some kind of disrespect for your mom when You're I fucking- disrespectful as fuck. I paid for the fucking first funeral of all, as soon as it all. happened just because- The pair would later apologize to one another. 
damage was already done. Adam having shown that he wasn't going to take accountability for his actions, and the blatant fact that he valued views over his employees, something that would come to plague his future actions. Following these revelations, Housephone, as well as the other members of the Disconnected podcast, decided to cut ties with Adam, leaving the No Jumper brand to form their own media company. Okay, so I'll get this out of the way first, is that still, to this day, I got nothing but love for Blasey. Blasey has announced that he's uh, stepping away from No Jumper, specifically disconnected, you know. But, you know, he was brought on to No Jumper through House Phone and House Phone. I mean, we don't really know exactly where he's at still. We haven't necessarily had like a full conversation with him. Uh, the last time that we communicated with him, Josh talked to him on Wednesday, and he seemed pretty enthusiastic about still doing the show. So I don't know if that changed between Wednesday and Thursday or if he just wasn't having a good day or what, but uh, you know, the Blasey thing, I assume just kind of comes from that. And so in the weeks that followed, Adam would have another falling out with the other hosts, AD, over replacing him on the show. What happened after that? I was, yo, this is the crazy what thing happened after that is the today. niggas are sitting here saying this shit about me, saying you saying shit about me in the Discord. That's the only thing that but happened. That's what I'm saying is whose fault was that? It's fucking Lush's fault. Like, you know, right, this, I'm not this blaming is my nobody for today. As well as firing Lush live on stream. Lush, you What's lied up? to me. What? You lied to me, Lush. About what? What I just tried to talk to you about in the hall? Nah. Yeah. Nah. Yeah. I didn't say nothing. Well, I got conf confirmation from a bunch of different people. Nah, fool. Yeah. Nah. Yeah. And it looks funnier the more you lie. I don't I really like when. I mean. I mean, you could look through the entire chat log in there. I didn't say anything like that in there, fool. Like, okay, well, maybe we can do like a full analysis of it, but I think I get the gist from talking because to I everybody. Didn't, because I did not say that, dude. I did not. Like, I'm saying, like, if I did, I would have told you when you asked me before. Like, no, you lied to me to my fucking face out there, right in my own office. No, dude, I didn't. You like, did. If if I did, I would have said something. Well, then there's a bunch of people in the Discord who are tragically misled, and some of them are people that I trust. I mean, I don't know. I mean, Mikey's in the Discord. Like, did I say? It feels kind of crazy that all these people would just like try to frame you. You know, it seems and, a little bit more likely that you're just talking to. I mean, there's been a lot of like, I'm not trying to throw nobody under the bus, but I didn't say like what you said that, that shit. I didn't say that. Okay. I didn't fool. Like I would have told you if I did. Like, I mean, it's just, it's gonna, it's gonna take you providing the entire discord chat and, and pointing out line by line things that you didn't say that I'm being told I mean, by multiple people the, that you did say. I can show you the entire chat. I didn't say that shit. I honestly think at least for now, maybe we can come to the bottom of this at some point, but it's probably better than you just leave. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I did not expect this uh, to be a narrative that was taking place today, but we just, we got to hold ourselves to a higher standard. And uh, yeah, I don't know, dude. I'm just super disappointed. Fans already hated Adam for disregarding his friends and employees, but the worst was yet to come, as by the 15th of March 2023, the seeds of Adam's downfall sown back in 2018 would finally bear fruit, when the perv busters brought up the allegations of Adam being a pedo live on stream. So what's up with these allegations of, of, of Adam fucking with a 16 year old? Nah, come on, bro. We can't do that, man. What come you mean on, we can't bro. do that? Come on, but bro. wait, wait, no, no. I'll be a hit. Wait, nah, I'll be, on, I'll be a hypocrite if I don't address it. Man, come on, but I'll be a hypocrite. But I'll be a hypocrite if I don't address it though. With, especially oh, with. Oh man, like, this other Come on, bro. We can't come on. Man. I'm just saying. I would. Hey, Flacco, Flacco. Wait, wait, wait. Flacco, Flacco. I'll be a hypocrite if I don't address it. When you, you know what I do. As soon as the question was brought up, the stream was ended. Not long after, Adam would enter the studio and confront the perv busters, calling them liars and kicking them out of the studio. I'll be a hypocrite if I don't address the situation that happened with you. There is no situation with me. The one where you was messing with the 16 year old girl? What do you think happened? The article says I'm going she was on. 19 when I met her. She was 19 when you met her? Yeah. The you... article says it. So, but what did you say? I said that I spoke to her on the phone when she was 16 before I realized that she was 
Oh, that's, how we, that's, yeah. how we catch that's, that's how we she catch him. She didn't even know that she was doing something fucked up. But it don't even matter, but that's how that's we catch him. You felt like you were gonna come on my platform and expose me, though. Like, why? No, it, 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 it was just in the midst of the yeah, conversation. Yeah, it, was it was in the midst of he, he didn't, hey, he, yeah. it, it's not on him on nothing. Yeah, right. It was in the midst of the conversation. But you yeah, came on my platform and spread lies like that? Lies? Lies. Is it lies? I mean, you could have done some research and figured out anything. Did you talk to her when you were 16? For like five minutes when I was 21. I'm 39. You wasn't 23? I was. Be fair, I, right? I might have been 21. Right? So how I'm you 40. don't know? How, how you don't yeah, know if you were 21? It was 20 years ago. It, it, it still happened though, wait, but we can't take that wait, jacket wait, off. Wait, wait, wait. We can't take that jacket wait, off for nobody. Fair, right? You gotta go. Hey right, man. No. Yeah. Let's go. Look. This reopened a lot of old wounds in Adam's career and gave the growing mob of haters more fuel against him. From their perspective, Adam was a predator that would sell out his friends for views and ran no jumper like a reality TV show rather than a podcast. Even though Pump would come forward and make some shocking claims about Adam and their time on tour. I'm gonna beat up that pedophile. Cause folks is a pedophile. I was underage, so how you gonna fuck the same girls that I was fucking when I was 16? Yes way, yes way. It appeared that Adam couldn't bear any more hate and being made fun of, but that was far from the truth. On the 27th of June 2023, Adam would casually make an announcement that forever changed how his fan base viewed him. So I've been with my girl for seven years. We just got married. We're not in an open relationship, but from a porn perspective, we shoot with other girls, stuff like that, right? Mm -hmm. But no other guy's busting her coochie and ass out. Well, you guessed it. Over the weekend. Oh no. Something like that happened. She filmed her first ever scene with another man. I know oh, you was mad. Shit. You I was mean, angry. I, I agreed to it, so I wasn't. But, I, but I say but, but, angry might not be the word. But you was kind of like disappointed a little bit. Like, you five like cut, like cut, that's your six. Considering the fact that Adam and Lena got married just a few days prior, fans were more than baffled by the news. A few hours after Adam made the announcement, Lena uploaded her own to Twitter, which only further shocked everyone watching. Hey guys, guess who I'm shooting with today? <laughs> it's finally happening. Adam had only ever made OnlyFans content with Lena and other female performers for the past seven years. Adam was the type of person to profit off the drama in other people's lives and never allow the same to be done to him. So what led Adam to go through with this new development? Was it an elaborate joke set up for attention and views? And what did this mean for their relationship and brand going forwards? Initially, only a handful of people were aware of Lena's new production, but Adam wanted to change that by promoting it on every subsequent No Jumper stream. Yo, Adam, you let it yo. Isn't it crazy that you guessed it on here? Like, before I had even really hinted at yo, you it, really you did guessed that? it. You watched it? I didn't watch it. I'll probably see some chunks of it. So you just like was in another room listening to her moan and groan and shit? No, she was at a hotel being filmed by a professional. And, and down by a professional, to be totally honest. And you weren't there? No, I was at the house playing some high stakes so online real. poker tournaments. Sneaker was even brought onto the show to discuss Lena's new film and what this meant for Adam's personal brand. No allegations never leave. What, of being a cuck? Yeah. Yeah, because you get it hard. That's never gonna... And, and the thing with you leave. is that you just like talked about it, whereas this, like, I haven't actually seen it yet, but... Oh, you, you know, haven't seen it yet? The content? No, but like, it's going to be on Twitter. It's gonna, I'm going to at least see the trailer. Right. Probably not going to go out of my way to see the full like half hour version or whatever. Adam even went out of his own way to mark the anniversary of the event on his Twitter page, quoting, It's officially been a week since I let my wife do porn with another guy. I felt a little jealous at first, but overall, it wasn't that big a deal. She's watched me sleep with hundreds of girls and it's never affected our relationship. Sleeping with that gentleman has been amazing for both her career and our business. Overall, I'm glad we did it. I'm happy to report her return to its pre-BBC size. Adam had finally gotten what he wanted, any and everyone on the internet to know about his wife's recent activities. However, what followed was a mountain of replies calling Adam the cuck of the century, with replies stating, Adam paid Jason a lot of money to do his wife. That's cuckoldry on another level. Another reply from Leafy stating, whatever helps you sleep at night. 
TikTok. Adam would proudly accept his new title and even continued to make tweets that made him look even more of a cuck. In a little over a week, Adam had completely transformed his image from a somewhat respectable online personality to a guy calling himself a cuck for views. Things even reached an all-time low when Adam not only interviewed his wife about the scene. Okay, going into it, how did you feel? Okay, so... I didn't really know the shoot was going to happen until the day before the shoot. That is it all plan. happened so fast because in my head, I was like, oh, this is going to be my debut scene. I'm going to need like two months out. I'm going to go hard in the gym. I don't know about I'm debut like scene. I mean, I am a human being. <laughs> but right? also to talk to the other performer that made the scene possible. So a lot of people want to know, uh, I don't know, just like if I should feel diminished as a man as a result of this. Like the cuck narrative is very, very strong. I just want to get your thoughts on that and if, if, if how people should think about that in, in the context of me being, you know, the, the silent third party and all this. Well, I don't know. Like, if you look at it in the business aspect, then basically it was just a job, you know. She's high up in her ranks. I'm high up in my ranks. Us two together, obviously, we make the most amounts of money. So it's not so much being a cook. If you're comfortable with it, y'all communicated it prior. Obviously, she said y'all did. So it's not really a cook situation. It's more of like who people come in and make an understanding. Adam mostly deflected the criticism by framing it as a boost to his career. Like, the, basically, the hate is like, it's, it just feels like whatever. Like, I don't fucking care. Like, it doesn't really, if anything, I wonder if it's ever gonna stop. That's all, it's all engagement. That's the shit that's keeping me like going crazy on Twitter is just people talking shit. Okay, In all of this, Adam wasn't the only one who received a career boost from this video. Going on No Jumper was the first time Jason was interviewed, but due to the interactions with Lena on camera, it certainly wouldn't be the last. On the 15th of July, 2023, Jason would receive a second interview on the fan bus, where he'd revel in his rise in popularity. In the headlines lately, haven't you? Yes, I have. You are everywhere that I look on the internet. It's burning my phone battery. I had to mute the notifications. Really? How do you feel about being viral? Is this your first time being like super viral? Uh, well, I got viral from a, a BuzzFeed interview once. Mm -hmm. uh, and a few outrageous TikToks I've done. So I'm not okay. used to it. But this one is crazy. Like. So your video yesterday. And reveals some very striking information about his time with Lena. Do you think that you fucked her better than Adam did? Well, obviously, yes. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure he probably felt different with Adam for her because love is involved emotions. But as for the physical aspect of getting fucked, obviously. The internet making fun of Adam for being a cuck didn't seem to matter. But when Jason did the same, it was a completely different story. I trusted you to pork my wife. It seems like that clout is getting to your head. You're talking real, real spicy and I ain't really feeling it. Number one. Temper tantrums aside, Adam and Lena still intend to garner as much attention and views as possible from the video by making it the main topic of discussion in every podcast they go on, and it doesn't seem like they'll be stopping anytime soon. Fans have theorized that this entire cuck situation was simply a ploy by Adam to move the attention away from the fact that a majority of his employees have left No Jumper and the pedo allegations that recently resurfaced while gaining some virality. While this does seem possible since Adam has directly stated that he is opposed to the idea of Lena performing with another guy. You were on a academics podcast, and you said that you're you'd be okay with having another guy have sex with your girl. Well, this kind of got spun out of control. But I said that we had considered it, that we had you know had the conversation about swinging, and I think what kind of got lost in that whole conversation is that it, it hasn't happened, and like we've never really like. It was more just a, an idea. The only thing we can say for sure is that the No Jumper brand feeds off controversy and this situation is no different. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you subscribe.